In this lecture, we will go on and run our NZBox API and see what we get out of the box. To build a web API, you can either press Ctrl Shift B or using the build tab over here, you can build the solution. After building the solution, you can use the play button or the run button over here and run your API. The API is running and it opens a browser window and it also opens your API. So my API is pointing to HTTPS localhost 7081. Your port number could be completely different and that depends on the launch settings.json file. So make sure you know what your port number is. After that, it is pointing to swagger forward slash index.html. Swagger is a popular tool for documenting APIs and providing a user-friendly interface for testing and exploding the APIs. When we look at Swagger, we can clearly see the endpoints. At the moment, we only have one endpoint, which is the weather forecast endpoint. If we see the API, we only have one controller, which is the weather forecast controller. This is the endpoint that we are talking about. If you look at the routing, the URL is pointing to this controller directly. That means when we open Swagger, this is also pointing to the controller directly. So this URL would basically be localhost 7081 forward slash weather forecast. Now Swagger gives us ways to explore and test our APIs. At the moment, it is saying that we have one action method and that is the get action method in the weather forecast endpoint. If we expand on that, we have a method to try the API and explore this endpoint. Now to see this endpoint code, you can go back to the API and when you open the controller, you can see that there is only one API. The API we have, the action method we have is the HTTP get action method. And that is what is being shown in Swagger over here. Now ASP.NET Core by default gives us an API endpoint and one action method. And it is basically a weather forecast action method which gives us uh, the weather forecast for the next few days. And to see this in action or to test this out, we can use Swagger. So if I expand on the get method, because that is the only method we can try, I will click on this try it out button. And because this is a get method and it doesn't need any input parameters in the route, I will click on the execute button over here. It comes back with a 200 response and in the RESTful world or an HTTP 200 response means a successful response. If you look at the request URL, we are pointing to HTTPS localhost 7081, which is the application URL for my web ABI. After that, it is pointing to the weather forecast resource and using the get keyword, it is trying to get all the weather forecast back. So here the response is an object with date, temperature in Celsius, temperature in Fahrenheit and some summary. And this is the prediction for the next few days. Now let's go back and try to create a new endpoint just for an example. So I will stop my application. And because we want to create a new API, I will, I will create a new controller. So right click on controllers, go to the add button and click on this controller. This way we can create a new controller. Now it is asking us which template to use because we are using a API because we want to create an API controller. We will go to this over here. We will select API from the left hand side and we will select API controller empty. Click on the add button 
and let's say we want to create a students endpoint which will give us the name of students so i will create this controller name as students which is the resource followed by the name the keyword controller whenever you create a controller you have to suffix with the keyword controller so that asp.net core can recognize that this is a controller with that i will click on the add button and this will create an api controller now you can see it is a lot empty over here but we will go on and create a new action method in here we have the route which is pointing to api forward slash controller so if i put a comment over here this url my url will be https localhost the port number i won't mention that because it can be different for individuals after that it is pointing to api forward slash the controller name and this is how we can represent the controller name when the application runs it will take the name of the controller which is students so it becomes forward slash api forward slash students now this is the uri to the controller but after that we have to have the action method so let's say we create a get action method so let's create an action method first which is public i action result and let's call it get and we can also call it get all students because we are not passing a parameter we don't want to get a single student we want to get all the students back and in here we will use the http get attribute so we will annotate this method in square brackets with the http get attribute and this is how this url will be get which is the http verb and when you point to this url which is your local host port number forward slash api forward slash students with the get keyword it will come to this action method and will execute this code now when the caller comes to this code we want to return all the name of the students back so let's say we have student names as an array and this is some information which is coming from the database this is only for demonstration purposes but let's assume that student names are coming from the database once we have gathered these names we want to return the response back so i will use the return keyword and return a successful response which is http 200 and in asp.net core that means an ok response if i hover over this one you can see that it creates an ok result object that produces an empty status with a 200 ok response and inside the ok method i will pass the student names back to the caller which is swagger in our case so now we have an action method and when i will point to this url using the verb get i should come to this controller method and this action method so let's see this in action i will run my api again the api is running and now unlike before we are seeing two endpoints we were seeing the weather forecast controller which is the default one so let's just minimize that but now we also see a new endpoint which is the students endpoint and in our case it's the students controller and in the students controller or endpoint we have a get action method and that is showing over here so if i want to try it out i will expand this click on the try it out button and hit the execute and as you can see over here when i tried the get method it was pointing to localhost my port number api forward slash students and this is the same url that was mentioned as part of the comments so when this url is hit with the get keyword this action method is called and executed and because we were returning a list of response back we can see that as part of the json in the response and this was a successful 200 response
So now we know how routing works and how to run and consume an API using Swagger. Now you can also use Swagger but there are other alternatives of how you can consume your API. A popular alternate is Postman. You can go to postman.com and download this and once you have downloaded you can click on this new button over here. Once you click the new button, you can create a new basic request. On the right hand side over here, we can create a request from the plus icon over here. Now we can select the HTTP verb that we want to target. In our case, we want to target the HTTP GET keyword and we have a URL that we want to target and that is HTTPS localhost 7081 forward slash API forward slash students which will give us all the students back. So let's try this from Postman as well. I will give the URL over here and just by doing that we have the URL and the verb and this should point to the students controller action method which is the get action method so I will click the send button and we can see the response back and it is the same response as we have in swagger and the same HTTP status of 200 OK so it is totally optional for you whether to use swagger or postman in this course we will be using swagger because it just gives you the endpoints and the related methods so you don't have to maintain the list in postman you can do everything in swagger